Hey, welcome to Gadgets and Gizmos, where geek meets chic. We're here to provide you with informative tech tips and popular product picks. I'm your host, Mark Saltzman, and today I'm joined by my co-host, the technologically talented Amber MacArthur. Hey, Amber. Hey, thanks, what are you Mark. showing us later today in the show? Um, I'm actually going to do a quick review of some high-tech blenders that are out there. We're going to look at three different blenders. High-tech blenders? High-tech blenders. All I know right. one of them even has an LCD screen, so it's kind of exciting. So awesome. we're going to take some fruit. I'm going to need your help with some bananas and man. some other stuff. We're going to throw it all in and see which does the best job of blending. Awesome, yeah. very good. So you'll have to stay tuned for that. But before we get to that, were you worried that your parents were upset about violent and gory video games like Resident Evil 4? Well, now they may be even more enraged about a new Resident Evil 4 controller to use with your GameCube. Why should mom or dad care about a joystick of all things? Well, a company called NubiTech has come out with this bloody chainsaw controller that may be offensive to some. Yeah, a bloody chainsaw controller. That is the only way to wow. describe this thing. Can you believe what this is, is this? you know, <laughs> this is unbelievable. This is basically, at its core, it is a controller for your GameCube. So to, instead of the purple one that plugs in, this is designed to look and play with Resident Evil 4. Now, you can play this with any game, but as you can see, it is modeled after a uh, bloody chainsaw in the game. The uh, enemies come uh, at you with this. And um, basically, here are your trigger buttons. You can play it like this, mm -hmm. and it is really just the controller. It doesn't move. The blades don't move or anything like that. That's good. <laughs> I think it's more about, you know, Resident Evil 4 and the series as a whole from Capcom is very, very popular. Um, it's got this whole cult following. So I think this is like a collector's item, if you will. It's got this little stand here that uh, you place the, the controller down when not in use. And it's got a little uh, area to put your memory card. And what I dig, Amber, I like mm -hmm. this part, actually. This is, if I can just turn it upside down, this is where the cable is stored. This is the cable to connect it to the GameCube. Uh, so you just okay. pull it out, connect it between the, uh, uh, the controller and the GameCube, and it's stored underneath. I think that's kind of clever. Yeah, mom and dad are not going to like this one, you know, yeah, no can, nor I don't, th I don't think any politicians like Senator Joe Lieberman, who's often criticized games for being too violent and gory. Yeah, this is obviously crossing the line, but it's a neat little product. Again, for the uh, 17 and older crowd. Yeah. In fact, Amber, this is the first uh, controller that's been rated. Uh, it's usually video games have age ratings. This has been rated, uh, self-rated. It's a self-regulated uh, uh, rating from the company, Newbie okay. Tech. They gave this what they call B for bloody. For uh, They're not supposed to sell this to uh, under 17 years of age. I can see why it's mm. a little violent looking. <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah, my wife, I brought, that, I brought this home, my, and my wife's like, uh, yeah, so who's this for exactly, yeah, and are the no kids going to see this? But uh, hey, it's kind of neat, and yeah. it actually works well as a controller, a little bit you know, not Wonky. a little bit uh, heavier, yeah, kind of cumbersome. But uh, if you're a huge fan of the Resident Evil uh, franchise, it's 49 bucks US. You can go to newbietech.com, learn more about it. But I thought, you know, hey, we got to show this on Gadgets Yeah, definitely. And I don't think I'll be buying one, but it's kind of neat. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Amber, well, coming up after the break, we'll take an in depth look at the latest in portable media center tech. Is Samsung's entry up to par? Find out when Gadgets and Gizmos returns. <laughs> Nights on G4. It's science what? with a bang. Yes! Bang goes the theory. Weeknights at 8 on G4. Why bring music with you on the go when you can also bring music videos? Well, that's the idea behind the Portable Media Center products. And there are many of these PMCs on the shelves, but we like this one from Samsung, the Yep 999, mainly because it's the smallest one on the market and because it runs on the intuitive Windows media-based operating system. All right, today we're looking at the Samsung, uh, yep, Samsung at Yep 999. This is uh, uh, basically a, a portable player yep. that has a 20 gig hard drive inside, so much like an iPod, if you will. But because it has a color LCD screen, it can also play videos and pictures as well as your music. Um, so the, it basically translates to about 5,000 uh, songs, uh, tens of thousands of photos, and about eight, 80 hours of video, which is great, uh, Amber. I know that if you travel a lot, yep. you don't often have time to watch TV at home. You can bring those shows on the go. So I've got here the Simpsons that I uh, copied over from my Media Center PC. 
Let me show what it looks like here. Wow, it's pretty good quality. Yeah, it does. It actually has a very nice looking screen. It's, it's quite small too compared to some of the other portable media centers. Yeah, you know, Creative has yep. one and iRiver, and this is definitely one of the smaller ones on the market. And I really do like the operating system. So for example, if we hit this little Windows logo here, you can uh, navigate through your various sections. So music, let's play some Damien Rice, play all, shows you the album cover. And as you can hear, it plays the song as well. Okay. It's got so built-in speakers. This operating system, this is the Windows operating system, right, that for the portable media centers. Right. Yeah. yeah, it's really, really easy to use. I've played around with it before. The navigation's great, and you can pick it up in just a few minutes. Easily one of the best features of yeah. these products. Because there are other uh, products on the market. We call them PVPs, portable video players. Mm -hmm. The PMCs, I know all these acronyms, huh? <laughs> portable media centers, that is basically a Microsoft-branded uh, product because it's got their uh, operating system. But it really is the, the smoothest out of the bunch. I mean, really, you don't have to be tech savvy to know how to navigate through all your photos. Yeah. So you know what I love about it is that let's say you're coming back from a vacation, you can copy all of your digital photos onto there, add a favorite piece of music, and then when you see somebody, you know, a family member in a mall or what have you at a family uh, gathering, you can just press play and you got a slideshow right there with your photos exactly. with music. It's great. It's cool too if you're traveling, I think, because I, uh, I hate lugging my laptop around in mm -hmm. a backpack or in a bag. So this is really cool if you don't like the movie on the plane and you get one of these and you're able to actually bring your own movies. But how many movies does it actually store? Yeah. It stores about 80 hours of video, so okay. if you do the math, you know that's a, that's a good uh, 40 that's movies good. or so. But it's the the way to get it onto the player is a little bit tricky. Mm. You're not really, even though you can do it, Microsoft doesn't endorse you to rip DVDs to your hard drive and copy them over to the okay. player. That is technically possible. Uh, there are other solutions, like in the U.S., you can go to uh, CinemaNow.com and download movies directly onto the okay. player. Um, I like the fact not only does it have uh, built-in speakers, but if we can just zoom in again on this product, I like that in the back there's a little bit of a kickstand. So oh. if you see here you press this button and watch that boom oh, that's cool. so then you put it down and it is now you know I got it on the lazy oh, Susan here neat. plus you may see that we have some cords here beside the player you can actually watch that video clip that TV show your camcorder footage a movie on a big screen simply plug it into the uh, Samsung yep 999 and then plug these uh, you know RCA cables into a TV a compatible TV and now you can watch it on the big screen okay, what about web browsing or anything like that no it is not going to replace your PDA or your Blackberry or anything like that it is strictly a media device, hence the name Portable Media Center. So it's basically TV, home movies, mov uh, feature film movies, music, and uh, and photos. Basically, five things that you okay. uh, want to so use. So just away. entertainment, basically. Yeah, but it's uh, it's you know it does a really good job overall. And like we were saying earlier, there's other products that do mm -hmm. it as well. Why don't we take a look at the pros and cons? We got a little graphic here. So by far, my favorite thing about this, aside from its uh, small size, is that very easy to navigate through. Uh, it's got that Windows Media software, so it's a real breeze. It also supports multiple file formats, so JPEGs and WMAs, WMVs, you name it. And lastly, the, as you saw here. With that Simpsons clip. I mean, really good quality yeah, video. Yeah, it looks really yeah, good. good. stuff. Some of the things I don't like about it is that it is very costly. It is $7.99, which is Ooh. now we're talking about the price <laughs> of a laptop computer. So that has to drop for this to catch on. Also, Amber, you can't, unlike some other models on the market, you can't record directly onto the unit. There are models from RCA and Apex. They don't run the, the Windows operating system, but you can connect it directly to your cable or satellite receiver okay. and record TV uh, or movies right onto it. Can't do that with this yet. Um, but o overall, good product. 20 gigs is a little bit, you know, I have a 60 gig MP3 player that I use just for music. I'd love to see a 60 gig Something version of this because of all that video. Can you buy extra memory or anything like that? No, okay. no. it comes with a 20 gig hard drive. It should be more than enough for most, yeah. most folks. But for me, I'd like something a little bit more robust, but I'm sure future iterations will have the ability to record directly on it. It'll have bigger hard drives yeah. and, uh, you know, a few other bells and whistles. But for a first generation product, the, and the first one from Samsung, I think it's the best out of all the PMCs out there. Yeah, I've played with a few of them and I definitely like yeah. it. Just because it's small enough to, some mm -hmm. of them are a little bit too large to sort of carry around, but this seems yeah. pretty good. Yeah, the one Bill Gates held up from Creative, a little too, little too bulky. A little too bulky, yeah, <laughs> right. this is nice and sleek. Excellent, thanks, Amber. Well, after the break, when you look at the big picture, you don't often think uh, of the patterns and shifts in design and that they can have effects on a global scale. We'll look at how the design behind technology has changed over time when Gadgets and Gizmos returns after this commercial break. <laughs> Welcome back to Gadgets and Gizmos. Today our field reporter, Pei, takes us on a historical tour of technology. She visits an exhibit that's traveling the globe to find out how the design of gadgets has the capacity to transform our world. The design of gadgets and technology is constantly changing and evolving, but is it always for the better? Massive Change, the Feature of Global Design is an exhibit that takes a look at where design has come from and 
where it's going. I'm with Greg Van Alstyne, who is the director of Institute Without Boundaries, and you are the ones who put together this exhibit. Yeah, we worked on this show for over two years. I was the leader of the team for, 19, uh, for 2003 and for 2004. And uh, we got to work inside the Bruce Mao Design Studio. We created the entire thing. We researched it, we designed it, we built it with the Vancouver Art Gallery that commissioned the show. Wow. So it was like an unbelievable experience. And the room that we're in focuses a bit more on the design of technology, which is mm -hmm. perfect for our show. So tell me a little bit about the evolution of technology and the gadgets that we're seeing in here. Okay. Well, this, this place is called the information economy. So information, obviously, it's a place where design is a driver. And here, this room is called the input room. So we have the, the personal collection of Bill Buxton. He's our chief scientist now at Bruce Mao Design. The guy is an absolute guru. And over the years, he's worked with all these devices. He's worked with all the best people in the field. And he lent us his personal collection and gave us uh, all the inside scoop on all of these devices. And of course, some of us have used a lot of them, but some of them are like super bizarre things that you never see unless <laughs> yeah, you're... Yeah, they're a little weird, a little wacky. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, now, to start off, I mean, an Etch-a-Sketch. Mm -hmm. I had one of these when I was eight years old. So yeah. what is this doing in, in this room? Well, I had Bill, when I went to University of Toronto, I had, I had uh, Bill teach me uh, computer graphics. And he, he brings both these devices out and shows them to the class. And he asks this question, which of these, these two dr drawing devices is the best drawing tool? And everyone has a different reason. This one, that one, everyone's used Etch-a-Sketch, so they think that's the coolest thing. But he says that the answer is, it's actually which problem are you trying to solve? Because this thing, the Skadoodle from 1979, is the best tool for drawing circles. And this, the Etch-a-Sketch, of course, is the best tool for drawing straight lines. This is like an evolutionary family tree. So you can see, if you follow one of these lines, let's say we come over here to the Apple Newton. Okay. This is like the coolest early device for handwriting technology. Uh, so you could just, you know, pick up the stylus and use a natural human input and draw something into it. But it didn't do the job uh, quite as well as it needed to, so it had to get improved. And then General Magic made the Magic Cap. That was another uh, early device, but it wasn't until the Palm Pilot that it really hit the mass market and worked. Now, what is sort of the common theme in, in design for technology and gadgets? What's everyone trying to achieve when they're designing these things? Well, it, you know, it, it's just like with the Etch-a-Sketch. It depends. Am I drawing circles? Am I drawing squares? But um, what happened early on, uh, computers were really uh, designed by engineers to solve really complicated mathematical problems. It starts with, you know, uh, trying to hit a target. It's a, like most of these things have a military uh, background. But gradually, what our show is about is not just cool gadgets. It's about solving real human problems. It's about the humanistic focus behind design. We're trying to make the world a better place. Uh, designers really care about, you know, people's uh, quality of life and, and, and the welfare of the whole human race is really the grand project of design. That's what Massive Change, this exhibition, is about. Mm -hmm. So what you see here is an evolution from a technology-centered kind of thinking to a humanistic kind of thinking. This room is obviously it's about getting data into the computer. So we have ways to do it with keyboards, with mice, with uh, pens, with your voice, all different kinds of things. So what happens when the data is coming out of the computer? Well, why don't we go check that out in the next room? Okay, it's, it's the next room. It's pretty wild. Okay. <laughs> okay, so this is the next room. Yeah. What do you think? Uh, it's very cool. It's very busy. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is what we call the image economies room. And uh, the idea here is that all over the world, we are making what's invisible into visible. And what we've divided the room into two different categories. So you can see there's a whole ton of images that are black and white and a ton of images that are in color. There's over 4,000 images in this room. So the black and white images are, you might think of it as the scientific realm. They're all, they're all taken with different instruments that operate across the entire electromagnetic spectrum. Now, we are, we're talking about digital technology, and we were in the input room. But what we have here is everything is taken from light. There's not a single thing that's been created artificially in a computer from something that never existed. They're all essentially a kind of a photograph. But 
Whereas with the visible spectrum, mm -hmm. the light that goes from the red to the, to the yellow to the green to the blue, that's what our eyes see. And uh, it's just a tiny band of the entire electromagnetic spectrum. So what scientists and computer people and imaging specialists around the world are doing is they're finding ways to turn every single wave into an image. And once we can see it, then we can understand it, we can do things with it, and we can solve problems. So there you have design. You've got the, the realm of design across the entire electromagnetic magnetic spectrum. What makes design good or bad really depends on whether it makes your life easier or more complicated. For example, think about how a simple design like this could evolve into your next high-tech gadget. <laughs> Great stuff. Now you were at Massive Change, right? Yeah, I actually went and I checked out that uh, gadgets exhibit and mm -hmm. saw some of the neat stuff and talked to some people there. And I thought it was really interesting the way they talk about how some of the design of early devices really wasn't that good, um, but it all contribute to contributes to better design as we go right. on and like ergonomic, like yeah. ergonomically sound. Exactly, so, yeah. and you get things like the iPod that's really well designed and really easy yeah. to use. So all of these other devices have kind of contributed yeah. towards the good design of devices like that. So it was really really interesting. And it must be wild to see it sort of chronologically, like on a wall exactly. going from like you know the early keyboards and mice all the way to you know oh, 21st sure. century stuff. And one thing that's really interesting as well is the fact that none of the gadgets are any they're not the same at all, mm -hmm. right? It's not like a computer where you have common platforms. They're all very different, they look different, and so there's nothing that's common among all of them. Awesome. Well, yeah. it looks great. So that's massive change and you yeah, can also I think change. they have an online exhibit, a little mini yeah, exhibit. Yeah, they online. do. They have lots of cool stuff on yeah. their website. Yeah, so just go to your favorite search engine, type in massive change yeah. and have mm -hmm. some fun clicking. For sure. All right, thanks Amber. Now coming up next, we're going to whip up some frothy fun with the latest in mixology technology. Amber's here with Blenders galore and more when Gadgets and Gizmos returns after this break. Nothing is worse than hosting your first summer barbecue and discovering your strawberry daiquiris taste more like syrupy snow cones. But with a little research, you'll find that all it takes to blend the perfect beverage is, well, the perfect blender. But how do you know where to start? Amber is here mixing up some delicious drinks today to find the smartest ice crushers for the hottest summer beverages. Hey, Amber, I'm very excited about this segment. <laughs> you should be excited because yeah, you actually thirsty. get to help with peeling bananas. I think I can do it. I I'm know. up for the job. Yeah, so if you want to just peel bananas kind of consistently so while I talk about the are blenders. Are these ripe enough? Yeah, they'll sure? be okay. Yeah, okay. they'll be fine. So my question to you is that we know high tech is coming to the kitchen. Mm -hmm. We've seen, uh, you know, internet fridges and microwaves where you can download recipes. But now we're seeing high tech in our blenders. Exactly. So there's some high tech blenders we have here. Again, we're going to start from the low end and go to the high end. The first one we're going to look at is actually called the Try Best. It's a portable blender. It's the personal blender. It's about $60. Mm -hmm. um, and one of the things they say that you can actually pack this up and bring it with you. If you go to your cottage or you go uh, away on vacation or right. something like that, it's an easy little portable Not battery blender. operated, but it's, it's still not. It actually, compact. yeah, it's still pretty compact. Okay. So if you don't mind putting in part I'm of so your banana. Done. Look at this. Part of it, that's it. <laughs> yeah, just see. Like that. That puts, and I'll there pour in some juice at the same time. All right. We'll just put it over Let's here. Let's move my parasol out of the way. Yeah, even parasol, though I that's for later. Okay. Um, so this is a handy little blender. So there's no instructions here, you're there's just no winging it. There's no instructions, I'm just winging it. Okay. So um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna put the top on. This is the best part about this entire blender, which I really like, is you can actually mix everything in here. Shake it up. Shake it up a little bit, and then pour it upside down. Oh, that's cool. And then you can put it in. Didn't you forget the rum? <laughs> we're not having, <laughs> we're not having rum. It actually just blends it really quickly. Yeah, so it's kind of cool. So it's just really like a one twist blender. Mm -hmm. And then you can take it off. And I know we'll put rum in it. You can drink it right out of the cup. You can drink it right out of the cup. Or, or you know what, Mark? Why don't we have it pour it in here? Here. You, you you, can... Let me give you the honors for the first taste <laughs> test. You're scared. <laughs> no, no, no. I, you, you, you did that. You, uh, you quite don't well. trust me. All right. Thanks. Um, so we'll move that out of the way. Okay. Yeah, How so it that? tastes great. It tastes right. really, really me, good. So that's just it. Yeah, go ahead. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's really good. It's really Very fast. sweet, but all natural. Very yeah, nice. exactly. So we're going to move this I feel one. like this is an infomercial. <laughs> it's know, sweet, but all natural. I know. 
This is important though, all this blending Oh stuff. wait, there's more. There's more actually. So all the right. next one we're gonna look at is actually, we'll look at this one. The Total Blender. The Total Blender. Now this this is, is a little more expensive. This is actually um, around $400 US. And the techie part about this is it actually has a little LCD screen, which is a, not a very common thing you see in hmm. the kitchen. And what does that tell you? Um, that tells us that uh, this is for geeks, <laughs> more or less. Good answer. If you want to just maybe peel a banana or All two right, and pour that in. I'll put that in. Yeah, there, so, where are the other bananas? Okay. Yeah, we'll get you another banana Thank right you. here. So this is a really, really high-tech blender, and this is from Blendtec. And uh, we'll pour this in. So again, it has a nice sort of plastic uh, container, so it's dishwasher washer safe. Mm -hmm. So you don't need to worry about that. And you can make smoothies too, right? Not just. Yeah, yeah. these are basically smoothies, because yeah. we don't have any rum in here. But if you okay. have a summertime barbecue or something like that, this is great. Uh -huh. And also the plastic part of it is really yeah, one good. More. Yeah, one Sneak more. it in there. <laughs> Sneak it in here. So we'll put this on. Yeah. Um, and then we'll check out the LCD screen okay. over here. It tells us. We're both leaning hold. forward. Okay, okay. so. Um, so you're. So that's, if you listen to how powerful this is. That's what I'm going to Okay, I think we're done. Yeah, now so that we're you've done. Pureed it. Yeah, so we basically pureed it. So the neat thing about this Total Blender is that it has all these different speeds and mm -hmm. all these different programs. You can pro it has up to 30 different programs that you can operate the blender with. So you have all these different speeds, you can time it and you can get really specific Wild. about your blending. All so right. we're just going to set that over here while okay. we go to the last we got one. one more. Yeah, so we that's have one the Total more. Blender. That's the Total Blender, and this is my favorite. This is the tangerine colored oh, blender. Oh, I love it. I know, it's kind of fun. So this actually comes in 10 different colors, including chrome. Mm -hmm. um, it and says it's Ultra Power on the ultra side. Ultra Power, and it's about $260, and this is from KitchenAid. Great material. Yeah, great material, yeah. and it's kind of got this retro look. So yeah, if you totally. want to pop in the bananas, KitchenAid. we'll try this out. We're going to have a Very lot good. of smoothies at the I end of the day. I was going to throw in the parasol, but that might not taste <laughs> That <good>. might not <laughs> blend. <laughs> that might bl not blend too well. So this is kind of a cool blender if you All want something a little more colorful, a little more retro. We tried this out as well. Um, and also, this is really easy to use. Um, it has stir, chop, mix, puree, all these different options. And it's here. an MP3 player. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> one day, one day. Nice. All righty. So that does a pretty good job nice. of blending them. And then all of these blenders actually crush ice, which is nice if you're making daiquiris in oh, the summertime you and you want icy, icy drinks. So here's another option. And you know what? Let's let you have this one. Thank you. And I'll put we'll the just... little parasol over my ear. Exactly. So do you, you have you found that you get what you pay for? Like, I mean, the most expensive More ones? More or less, or yeah. Okay. If you want something really heavy duty for a summertime right. barbecue, I would go with something like the Total Blender, mm. um, which again is a little bit expensive, but hopefully it will last for a long time. You'll be able to have lots of parties. Awesome. Amber, thank you very, very much. Great stuff. Now, speaking of delicious treats, it's now time for our staff pick segment. We've got our tech researcher Mikey here with his choice uh, for his favorite blog. <laughs> now Mikey, you're always coming in after the party, but you know, at least you've got your drink, you're, you're good to go. Now you like to kick back and, and sur surf the net to your favorite blog while you're sipping a daiquiri. Exactly. <laughs> Lawrence Lessig's blog, um, mm -hmm. he is a writer for Wired Magazine. Um, does an enormous amount of work with the, the Creative Commons uh, license, um, the Electronic Frontier Foundation, which helps protect people's digital rights and, 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 and rights in general. Mm -hmm. um, fantastic blog to read, always new stuff. Um, he sometimes um, uh, talks about um, stuff from his Wired articles, stuff like that. He does audio blog articles about his, um, his Wired uh, work and stuff like that. So it's, it's an amazing blog to read and it's fun and interesting. Right, and, and like you said, always updated because like, it's, 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 it's such a bummer when you get really oh, into yeah. a blog and yeah. then they stop posting. Uh, and yeah, like, I have that problem with yeah. my blog, definitely. Yeah. All right, Updating awesome, <laughs> very good. And the website address again? Um, it's lessic.com slash blog. Okay, great. Mikey, thank you very much, great stuff. And thank you for watching today on behalf of all of us here at Gadgets and Gizmos. I'm Mark Saltzman telling you to respect the tech. See you next time.